and uh, a strong U.S. economy and very strong uh, stock returns, uh, the marginal tax rate for the highest earners was 90%. Um. A point that one of them, I, I study and teach behavioral finance, uh, which is the, the study of how investors are irrational when it comes, how human beings are irrational when it comes to money and financial decisions and investing decisions. And one of the big behavioral finance traps that people fall into is, is they overweight vivid recent evidence. So as a simple example, you know, a great company has a little bit of a bad quarter and the stock sells off by 25%. That's the kind of opportunity I look for as an investor, where investors are, I think, overreacting to vivid recent evidence. Um, uh, don't fall into that trap uh, when it comes to the results of this election. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I think the biggest concern that at least people in finance have is, you know, if we see a more aggressive tax policy, how will that affect the long-term valuation of mainly common stocks? And do you think um, we, are, we should expect something um, in the high 60s or 70s as far as minor tax rate is concerned? Or yeah. Think so? um, um mathematically, obviously, uh, for taxable investors, um, the higher the tax rate is on your gains, um, uh, the lower price that you should be willing to pay for an earnings stream, right? Um, uh, there's some things to keep in mind. I don't think uh, um, uh, Biden is going to go crazy um, and jack, jack taxes truly through the roof, number one. Number two is, is keep in mind that about two thirds of stocks are owned by people that do not pay taxes. That would be foreign investors, endowments, um, and people owning stocks in their IRAs and mutual funds in their IRAs. So it's only a third of investors who even have to think about taxes. Um, and thirdly, actually, if you look back to the 1950s, um, uh, a time when of great middle-class prosperity and uh, a strong US economy and very strong uh, stock returns, uh, the marginal tax rate for the highest earners was 90%. Um, and nobody's talking about going back there. So, uh, so for a variety of reasons, I guess that's why I'd say, again, um, even if uh, Democrats uh, win a clean sweep, um, I think there will also be some offsetting factors. I think we're more likely to get a stimulus bill passed um, fairly quickly after the election in that scenario. And Biden has called for a lot of spending on infrastructure, on clean energy. Um, so in other words, yes, taxes may go up somewhat, but those tax revenues are going to be reinvested back into the economy. And that's good for businesses. That's good for stocks. So, um, so uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I think stocks are going to do better under if Biden wins versus Trump wins, if Democrats do or don't win the Senate. Um, I'm saying mostly it's sort of too hard to know, but irrespective of if you're at one extreme or the other, you're probably wrong. Um, uh, stocks, I think, are going to do reasonably well um, uh, under any um, reasonable scenario. Now, the unreasonable scenario I should caution is, is if it becomes a contested election, if it's close, if Trump uh, refuses to accept defeat, if it goes to, uh, to the Supreme Court, if there are Trump supporters and militias out there with weapons in the streets, um, if, the, if the, heaven forbid violence emerges, that kind of thing, uh, you know, that's clearly bad for stocks. But um, I, I don't think that's likely. Mm -hmm.